You are listening to KZT Cornerstone Online Live. My name is Newton Ha. As it is Bible, May 8th, 2022. This is by Pastor Joseph Park. Our video narration will be autocast through Facebook and YouTube channels. Today's English Mercy Message for Mother's Day. The Legacy of Faith, Ruth chapter 1, verse 6 through 18. Then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. So Naomi and her daughters-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. With her two, da- two daughters-in-law, she set out from the place where she had been living. And they took the ro- road that will lead them back to Judah. But on the way, Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back to your mother's homes, and may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and to me. May the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they all broke down and wept. No, they said, we want to go with you to your people. But Naomi replied, why should you go on with me? Can I still give birth to uh, to two other sons who could grow up to be your husbands? No, my daughters, return to your parents' home, for I am too old to marry again. And even if it were possible, and I were to get married tonight and bear sons, then what? Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course not, my daughters. Things are far more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord himself has raised his fist against me. And again they wept together, and Orpa kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. Look, Naomi said to her, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. You should do the same. But Ruth replied, Don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, your, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi saw that, Ruth was determined to go with her. She said nothing more. If we desire to see the true work of God in these times and in these days, the Lord himself must intervene. No matter how many programs we make, no matter how many activities we do, no matter how great a man's wisdom and strength is, if the Spirit of the Lord does not work, it is completely meaningless. A person's true conversion can only happen when God intervenes. It does not happen by our own wisdom, by our own strength, and by our own power. We can sow a seed and we can give a water, but the one who grows is God. For a man's heart is completely depraved. It cannot choose God by his own will. It has no goodness in him at all. That's why no man can come to Christ unless God draws them. We must remember this. 
That's why if we want to see the true work of God, true conversion of men, we must rely on the Lord. We must go to the Lord. But how many times do we neglect the Lord and we try to do things with our own strength and power, thinking that men can do something? But there is nothing that we can boast. Every glory goes to Christ because Christ is the one who brings all the goodness. This is why the head of the church is Jesus Christ. And this is why that if we do not stick to Christ, we will bear no fruits. If we do not stick to vine, we will have no fruits. If we desire to see the true work of God being done in these times, we must go back seeking the face of the Lord. So many times we're so busy trying to do things in our own way, but it will never bring a fruit that bears from the heaven because it is Christ who can bring the true conversion and expansion of the kingdom of heaven. I've done many works, met many people, but the only time that I experienced the true power of God was when I was behind the Lord kneeling before Him. When His word went before me, when His power was the only power that I relied on, that's when I saw the greatest work of God. God's ways are much higher than men's ways, and God's ways are much different than our ways. It is only Christ who can start and finish things. And this is why we pray. The number one tactics that the devil will use to bring down a Christian from their first love is to take away, take him away from the place and time seeking the Lord, spending time with him. He knows that no branch can bear fruit by its own self. He knows that when the person is so close to Christ, when he, when he is spending time with the Lord, he knows that he will bear the fruits of Christ, which is a threat to him. So he will throw every kind of deceptions and delusions and comfort and temptations to draw him away from seeking the face of God. When we had our first love, praying an hour was not a big deal. We tried to make that time throughout the day because that was our priority. But sometimes as you live, when temptations come, when you get richer, when you get more busy, you will start to think like it's a waste of time spending time with the Lord. Oh, I can pray for 10 minutes today and that's okay. I can read just few verses today and that's okay. But that will be the start point of you being different. At first you will not see the change, but you will find it out after months that you became so far away from the Lord. Because we are children of God through our faith in Jesus Christ, God will raise you up again even if you fall, and God will discipline you if you are His child to come back to your first love. And I ask you, before He disciplines you, come back to Him. Come to place seeking the Lord again. At first it is hard because it's a biblical principle that you cannot serve two masters. If you love one, you will hate another. You cannot serve money and God together. Therefore, if you have if you have another master in your heart, it'll be so hard to pray again. However, if you come back to the Lord, he will help you and he will make you strong again. Beloved, you will find out that you can never be happy and truly be satisfied with the things of the world, with the pleasures of the world, with the lust of the world. There is the cross that every Christian must bear. However, during bearing that cross, the peace and joy from heaven sustains us with the heavenly strength and power. I want to read you the sermon from Charles Spurgeon concerning on first love. Love to Christ is dependent on our nearness to him. It is just like the planets and the sun. Why are some of the planets cold? Why do they move at so slow a rate? Simply because they are so far from the sun. Put them where the planet Mercury is, and they will be in a boiling heat, and spin round the sun in rapid orbits. So, beloved, if we live near to Christ, we cannot help loving Him. The heart that is near Jesus must be full of His love. 
love to Christ is dependent on our nearness to Him. If we stay near to Christ, spending our times with Him, the more you are near to Christ, the more you will love Him. Like Daniel, do not compromise your time being near to God with other things. Daniel was so busy, but he sought the Lord three times a day, and he did not compromise his times of prayer with anything else. The more you pray, the more you will love to pray. The more you read the Word, the Word will become more sweet. But the more you stay away from prayer, you will hate to pray. This is a strange principle that I found in my life. The deeper you get, the deeper you will find. And this is why the word said, "No one can serve two masters. You will love one and hate the other." This is a biblical principle. If you love the Lord, you will love the things of the Lord, and you will go deeper, deeper, and deeper. If you have the love for the other thing, you will go for that idol more and more. There is no such thing as I can serve both. But it's either this or that. I pray for your spiritual well-being, and I encourage you、uh, deeply in my heart as a sister of Christ, because you are not alone in this faith. May the grace and peace of God fill you with the power of heaven. Above.